and welcome back to another Aspects of Archaeology. Now, today we're going to be revisiting X. Now, you may recall that in the A to Z of Archaeology, X was for X-rays. Yes, it seems like only yesterday that I was filming the A to Z for X-rays. And in that film, we examined the various uses that X-rays have in archaeology. They're very useful for examining the contents of an object or how it's been put together. X-rays can see beyond plumes of rust to the original form of objects within. And CT scans, or X-rays from multiple angles, are even more useful. When examining mummies, for example, we can have a look at it inside the sarcophagus without ever touching it. CT scans can even be used to sculpt a copy of a person's skull, and based upon this copy, we can create a reconstruction of their face, all through the use of X-rays. We've seen uh, already how useful x-rays are to archaeologists, but when I did that video there was a whole technique that I uh, simply didn't have time to fit in. It's a technique which archaeologists use to identify exactly what something is made out of in order to better understand how it's made, or actually understand how, uh, for example, the corrosion on it has formed and how it's changed the object within. Uh, and in some cases actually it's used to understand what shouldn't be there. Uh, this technique is energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence. Energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence, or EDXF, uses X-rays in a completely different way. X-rays are fired at a sample and a reaction is detected. The X-rays specifically affect the inner shells of the atoms on the surface of the sample. These inner shells are called K, L and M, and for different elements they contain different numbers of electrons. So, X-rays are fired at the sample and bombard the surface of the sample. These X-rays cause electrons in shells K, L and M to rise to a higher shell. They then instantly revert back to their previous position. This reaction emits a specific amount of energy for each element. This can be detected and then plotted on a graph, gaining an idea of what elements are in the surface of the sample. This is extremely useful for understanding the composition of objects which have been excavated on archaeological sites. This technique is not only exciting and interesting in terms of its possibilities, but it's relatively inexpensive, and it's used on objects all the time. Imagine you have excavated coins which cannot be identified by eye due to corrosion. You pass them through an EDXF machine, and it reveals that part of its constituents are copper and zinc also known as brass. Believe it or not, brass is not a common metal in the world of ancient coins, and only one group are known to have used it widely. These are the Romans, so chances are that you're holding Roman coins. Paintings are beautiful, but they are also delicate, and often subject to cleaning or modification by owners, museums, or even sometimes art forgers. EDXF can identify the chemical constituents of the paint. The colour white, for example, used to be made from lead, but more recently has been made from zinc or titanium. In this way, not only are forgeries exposed, but are also able to understand how an object has been cared for. Jewellery from the Anglo-Saxon world is famous for its golden luster. However, this gold came from somewhere and often Anglo-Saxon jewellery is thought to have been made from melted down Frankish or Merovingian gold coins. Merovingian gold coins are known to have declined in quality through time. Bit by bit the gold was diluted and eventually fairly common metals were being added to the mix to make the gold go further. EDXF can analyse the amount of impurities in the gold and when compared to the look of the brooch we can confirm it was made from coins in the 7th century we can even confirm that the loop on top was made from a different gold source. However, before we all get carried away, it should be pointed out that EDXF does have limitations. For example, it can only analyse the very surface of an object. With rusty objects, this can have serious ramifications. We only really learn what the concretion is made of. This can mean that details of an object are invisible to EDXF. It's also worth pointing out that the test chamber is very small, so you're limited by which objects you can actually fit into the machine. EDXF, or Energy Dispersive X-ray Fluorescence, is a remarkably useful tool. 
Um, not only has, does it help uh, archaeologists to identify what things are made of, but in some cases, as we've just seen, it even helps to, to confirm changes which are suspected in the archaeological records, such as the change in the value of coinage and the way in which objects are, uh, are, are modified through time by human action. So this technique is, is remarkable in terms of its scope and its subtlety, actually. Um, and, uh, and I'm very glad to finally have been able to bring it to, uh, to a video here on ArcheoSoup. So, that's been Energy Dispersive X-Ray Fluorescence. And I assure you, it's not easy to say over and over again. Um, thank you for watching. If you found this video interesting or useful, feel free to comment below. Of course, please do subscribe to the channel by pushing the button above. Um, and if you uh, have any questions you'd like to send my way, just email them to me at rksoup uh, at gmail.com. And um, of course, as well, actually, we do also have a Facebook page. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook, all you need to do is search for Archeosuit Productions, click like, and uh, often things that can't fit onto the, uh, to the, to the YouTube channel do make it onto the Facebook page instead. News stories, for example, make it there all the time. So, until next time, thank you very much.